True Crime. I am your host, Dan Marie, and I love true crime. I am your co-host, Mark, and I hate true crime. We'll discuss old and new, solved and unsolved Missouri true crime cases. And sometimes we'll take a road trip or fly around the world to bring you a mystery from other parts of the world. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at Mo True Crime. Please like us and share with your friends. This podcast is not suitable for children. Please use caution when listening around others as the subject matter can be upsetting. Hello, Amory. This is uh, Mark with Mo True Crime. How are we doing? Where are we this week? Where are we going? Where do we go to this week? We are in Newtown, Connecticut. Oh, that's a pretty famous town. That's been in the news a couple of years ago, huh? Right. So how do people mostly know about Newtown? The school shooting with one of those crazy kids, actually. Right. So in 2012, Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting, where 20-year-old Adam Lanza fatally shot 20 children aged six and seven years old and six adult school staff members. Prior to driving to the school in his mother's car, Adam fatally shot his sleeping mother. We are in Newtown. We are talking about the wood chipper murder. I read this book, The Wood Chipper Murder by Arthur Herzog when I was in middle school. Probably a little too young to be reading about it, but I really liked the book. That does explain some things. What's it explain? How you're into this stuff. So 26 years before the Sandy Hook shooting, on November 18th, 1986, Hella Crafts was being dropped off at her home on Newfield Lane in Newtown. Hella was returning from an overseas trip in Frankfurt, Germany. Hella worked as a flight attendant for Pan Am Airlines. Hella was dropped off by coworkers and friends around 7 p.m. Before exiting the car, Hella said, matter-of-factly, Richard's home. Six weeks earlier, Hella's divorce attorney, Diane Anderson, received a report from a private investigator, Keith Mayo. Hella had hired in August of 1986. The report confirmed Hella's suspicions that her husband of 11 years was having an affair. Hella had found a long-distance phone number she did not recognize, which prompted her to hire a private investigator and shortly after, a divorce attorney. Hella had warned Diane Anderson that she was afraid of violence if she filed for divorce. She told her attorney, if anything happens to me, don't think it was an accident. Hella was 39 years old and a native of Denmark, and her husband Richard Crafts was 49 years old in 1986. He was a pilot for Eastern Airlines and also a part-time volunteer special constable. Hella and Richard had three children, Andrew 10, Thomas 8, and Christina 5. Hella had Richard served with a divorce writ on November 14th when she knew her children would be away. Days after being dropped off on November 18th, Hella missed a flight assignment and didn't call in. The airline called her home and Richard told them she went home to Denmark because her mother was sick. Later, Richard told police she was on vacation with a friend in the Canary Islands. Concerned friends of Hella's contacted her attorney to say that they thought she was missing. It wasn't until December 1st that Hella was reported missing. After friends were unable to find her in Denmark with her mother or on vacation with a friend or anywhere else, no one had heard from her at all. When questioned, the Crafts nanny, Don Marie Thomas, she said that the day after November 18th, there was a power outage in the home and Richard took her and the three children to stay with Richard's parents. Days later, when the nanny returned, she noticed a large black stain the size of a grapefruit and later new carpet in the master bedroom. She also noticed that the deep freezer that was in the garage was no longer there. Police also discovered that Richard had rented a Bush Bandit 100. 100. Do you know what, I'm, do you know what that is? Uh, I'm thinking that's where you take a brush and you stuff it in this chipper. And I'm thinking the 100 is probably 100 horsepower. So you probably got the biggest one because you're going to have some thick brush. Yeah, it said it's a, it's a commercial wood chipper. So it was called Brush Bandit 100 Commercial Wood Chipper. He rented it from Darien Rentals right after Hella disappeared. Police asked Richard to take a lie detector test, which he agrees and passes. However, the examiner did make a comment that he was, quote, very cold. On December 26th, police with a search warrant entered the craft's home. Dr. Henry Lee... This is the famous Dr. Henry Lee. You probably don't know him, Mark. No. No, I think through this education that, that I've had, I think you've mentioned him. He's a famous coroner medical. investigator for... Uh, yeah, medical examiner. Medical examiner for that area, right? Yeah, he's written a lot of books. If you've seen the documentary, The Staircase, he's featured in that a lot. He worked did on he, that um, case. Did he do Famous People too, or something? Yeah, that, he did. Is mm-hmm. that a New York City guy? Does he do New York City cases or New York State? I think I think he's kind of called in when anything... Mm. I, I'm not... 
I'm not so sure now, but you know, back in the day, right, right. I think he, I thought like JFK or something, right? Wasn't he, was he involved with that? No, I don't think I don't it was know, JFK, I but I, he he's been on some very famous cases because he writes about it in his books. But anyway, so he was actually working in Connecticut at the time this was happening. He actually went to the home. He examined the home and he found five tiny stains on the mattress in the master bedroom. The stains were proved to be human blood. And it was circulation blood, not menstrual blood. There was also blood smeared on the side of the mattress and there was unwashed washcloths and newly laundered towels in the bathroom that both tested positive for blood. Dr. Lee believed the blood droplets on the mattress landed with medium velocity. And then if Hella was murdered in the room at the time the blood struck the mattress that she was not lying down. So she was possibly standing near the bed. However, there was no body and no witnesses. Joseph Hine, a road department driver who was clearing snow after midnight on November 18th, remembered seeing a wood chipper near River Road and saw it again around 5.30 a.m. near Silver Bridge. He saw a man in an orange poncho operating it. Why would you wear an orange poncho when you're trying to hide something and trying to do it at night, right? I know, right? I mean... So you don't get hit by the snow plow that's observing you chopping up a body? Well, who who chops wood into a river at, you know, in the middle of the night anyway? <sighs> Murderers. Right. The police had the snowplow driver take them to where he saw the wood chipper on the silver bridge. So how do you think, how did the guy driving the snowplow, so he observes this, does he go to the police and say, hey, I, I saw some... Yeah. Oh, he did? He did, yeah. So like the police didn't come after. and ask, hey, anybody seen well, anything? Well, she wasn't reported missing until December 1st. So it was, it was, some time had passed, you know, a few weeks had passed. I don't know exactly when he went to the police, but I'm sure there were some pleas, like, anybody to the this? public, if anybody knows, and then it probably... I mean, obviously that struck him as odd because at that time of night, he probably doesn't encounter really anyone. How big is Newtown? I don't think it was that big, was it? Newtown's not that big. And the, the crime rate is very low for Newtown back in 86 and now. I mean, the- Except for these crazy things that keep happening. Well, yeah. And we'll get into a couple more cases at the same time that are very similar. And it is kind of odd that, but in terms of random and violent probably crime, it's very low. That this guy's thrown blood and crap in the water in their river. That's what started it all, right? He polluted the river, and then they started drinking <laughs> all this crap. That's crazy. a very interesting theory that you got there, but um, I'm not sure that really has anything to do with it. Because that, that would be like if an animal dropped in the water and dropped dead, and then it pollutes the water. It doesn't... That's a little different, right? That's kind of a little different. How is it different? Well, we don't have to go into it on this crime series. <laughs> but we eat animals, so, you know, we're... we're adjusted to that but not humans necessarily i think the police had the snowplow driver take them to where he saw the wood chipper um near the silver bridge police searched the riverbank and found a lot of hairs within wood chip that they compared with a hairbrush of hella's a human tooth was found and was compared with hella's dental chart and it confirmed it was confirmed that it was her tooth uh, the tip of a painted fingernail was found a piece of an envelope addressed to hella crafts an inch piece of a finger a toenail and bone fragments divers entered the lake and found a chainsaw they sent the chainsaw to Lear's laboratory where they found fragments of bleached and dyed human hair, blue-green fibers, flesh, and blood. The blood type was the same as Hella's. The chainsaw serial number had been scratched off and was eroded, but chemically restored in the lab. The number E5921616 was traced to a dealership that still had a warranty card sent in by Richard B. Crafts. Mm. There were 2,260 hairs found on the chainsaw and on shore. They counted were... all those hairs? They sat there and counted all those hairs. Yeah, I mean, they work in a lab. That's their job. They got to do that kind of tedious stuff. I think why, everybody why thinks it's them? cool to work in a crime lab. But then when you hear things like this, you're know. like, no. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 2,200. Okay. You also have to remember, they're not like, you know, my hair's long. We're not talking about long strands of hair. We're talking about hair that went through a wood chipper so it could have been a centimeter or an inch you know we're talking yeah, about that, that very small really, hair i don't think shears that kind of stuff right? it's meant to shear thick thicker things i think right. the hair is just going to wrap and stuff like that right probably and and, and it'll break some but i don't think it cuts it all up in the well anyway, it says that because this was in the chainsaw the hair was in the chainsaw right yes yes so you haven't talked about them going to the place that rented the yeah we're getting weapon. to that yeah okay 
out of those hairs found on the chainsaw and on shore were all examined. And all the hairs were shown to be cut, not with the scissors. They weren't, they, you know, it wasn't cut with the scissors. And they again used her hairbrush for comparison. And, you know, these were her hairs. The fingernail had bright red nail polish, which was compared to a bottle of nail polish found in Hella's home. And it was the same nail polish. But all of this was not enough to prove that she was dead. The forensics team rented the exact same wood chipper. The Darien Rentals even made a comment that, it was returned pristinely cleaned. You know, it was meticulously cleaned. They had never seen it that clean. <laughs> and so there was not, there was little to nothing that they had found in the actual wood chipper. Oh, really? He cleaned it that well? Yeah, they couldn't really find anything. down into those blades. Did they take that wood chipper apart, you think? I mean, like disassemble it and look for fragments of stuff? I'm not really sure. And to get an idea of what this looks like, I will have a picture of the the oh, it's the like image. a police photo of what it looks like it's a very large machine so how you can get in there and clean all of that i don't know how he did it he could have maybe he ran some liquid Water. through it or something you know but you also have to remember that the deep freeze was missing so she was frozen it's not like the fargo scene where there's the blood all over the snow um, you know so she would have been frozen so it's hard it's going to be easier to chip it up right when you and there's not like going to be liquid so you're not going to have blood splatter or spatter all over the place because she was frozen you know it's just like frozen meat when it's frozen it's not you know it's not dripping blood until yeah, it starts it to thaw yeah but when it will but i mean was, that, that chipper's going to warm up maybe i know it's connecticut it was around christmas wasn't it yeah and they had just gotten a snowstorm. That's why mm. he was out, you know, plowing the snow. None of this was enough to prove that she was dead. So the forensic team rented the the wood chipper and they actually ran a frozen pig through it. And the cut patterns and the characteristics matched the debris found on the shore. The bone fragments that were on the shore were determined to be from the skull, which Dr. Lee said no one would be able to live without those pieces of their skull. They wouldn't have been able to live through it. Wait, where'd they find these skull pieces? On the shore. Oh, oh, this is the remnants that were on the... Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then they also found gray metal, which was found and determined to be part of a crown that Hella had. With all of that evidence, they were the medical examiner was finally able to determine that Hella Craft was dead. Richard Crafts was arrested for the murder of Hella Crafts on January 13th, 1987. Based on the evidence... About two weeks. It took him about two weeks, huh? Well, no, she went, she went missing. She was reported missing on December 1st. Oh, yeah. Okay. But okay. she was actually last seen on November 18th. Right. But it is it actually did move quite fast. I mean, I don't know if that guy wouldn't have come forward seeing that wood chipper. You know, this was almost the perfect murder. He probably would have gotten away with it if that if that snowplow dude had not seen him. Well, he saw the wood chipper. Because he was the he only did see one him because he mentioned that saw the him. orange jumpsuit, huh? The orange poncho. But he was the only one that came forward saying that he saw him. So I mean if that guy didn't see him and didn't go to the police, he would have gotten away with it. Mm, I don't know. They would have started investigating around his house. They would have well, asked for a search true. warrant. Well, that's true. That's true. Because once when they were told found. that he was, you know, somebody was seen with a wood chipper, then they started investigating and found that he had rented one and had rented, you know, the U-Haul and all those things. I guess didn't eventually, you, yeah, they would have found it. Didn't you say it. somebody heard a wood chipper running late at night or something? Didn't, no? No. No. Uh, I thought you'd mention that. Basically, the prosecution came up with this, and based on the evidence, Hella got home at 7 p.m. and put her kids to bed around 8. The nanny was off that day, and then Richard and her got into an argument in the bedroom. Richard struck her in the head with possibly a police flashlight, so those big, like, mag light. He wrapped her in blankets and put her in the freezer in the garage. He then tried to clean up with towels. The nanny got home at 2 a.m. The next day, he took the nanny and the kids to his parents' house, saying there was a power outage at the home. Why, why, why did the nanny get home at 2 a.m.? Wait, what? To her home? She had a day off, so maybe she was out. She drinking. And then she... <laughs> Partying. She's away from those kids. I know, she's like, woo! She let loose. Yep. So yeah, why so... is that relevant? Why is that relevant that she got home at 2 a.m.? So think... what's this timeline? The nanny goes, right? She she leaves. The he, point he is that the wife, nanny gets... The wife puts the kids to bed. Yeah. And then they have this alone time, Yeah. Right? And then he, that he night. kills her. He, kill, he like, st struck her in the head. Right. Put her in the freezer, freezer, and then the nanny gets back, and then the next day he gets back. Yeah, the next day she the comes back to work. The nanny never sees her that next day, and then right. Richard takes her and the kids and gets them out of the house. Because if says, she was traveling, no power. she if she was traveling somewhere, I'm sure she would have told the nanny, "Hey, I'm going to be gone to Cayman Islands or wherever." Right. Right. Canary Islands. Yeah, she would have said that. And what are you going to do with the kids? Because he he yeah. wasn't going to be going. Right. Right. She would right. have said, hey, so, just come to your normal routine. Whatever's name's going to be here, but uh, I'll be gone. So, yeah, okay. All right. So she comes the next day. 
Then what? Friends were looking into where she was. I mean, they were very concerned. They're the ones that kind of went to, you know, went to the attorney and, and, and said, we think she's missing because Richard was giving them stories. You know, they would call and say, oh, no, she's in Denmark. Oh, she's in, in the Canary Islands. They would, he, he kept changing his story. So was, was she fighting the divorce or she, she filed? She, yeah, she filed. But what was she looking for? She wants the house for custody. Do you know what the whole, no. I mean, did, did, I what, think it was what just pissed the, him off? Well, I think he didn't want to lose anything. I mean, I think he kids? was one of those people. He didn't want to lose anything to her. He didn't want a divorce. He did, and he was cheating on he, her. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, but some guys will cheat and they still want to have that marriage and, and everything together, right? Yeah, but she they was done. On the side. She was like, nah, nah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dang. She <laughs> did <laughs> All right. So what's the what's the motive? What do you think the motive is? Okay. Well. Oh, you have, you're getting to that. I think the motive was he was greedy. Have you seen it, the divorce? Did they have any? It wasn't finalized. I don't think it matters what what was. I mean, does it really matter if she wanted the house or didn't want the house yeah, or didn't wanted the kids he, or didn't want the kids? Why did he kill her? The fact is that does he have she a wanted a divorce. They hadn't even gotten that far. He was served on November 14th. He had just been served. Okay. None of that had been discussed at that point. Uh, if he was served, they're discussing it. But they're still living together. Wait, they're still living together. Yeah. So neither one of them moved so he, out. He had no idea she suspected him of having an affair and hired a private investigator and had a divorce attorney. Uh -huh, he had yeah. no idea. Yes, he did on November 14th. Right. But she had hired... She had hired the private investigator in August of eighty yeah, so of eighty six. Gave, okay, so he gave the results. This private investigator gave the results to this woman. To the attorney and to her, yeah. Yeah. And said, and then, yeah, and she's having it. He's she's having only going to get an attorney when she figures this out. She's not getting an attorney before then. Apparently, she hired him about, from what I can tell, she hired them about the same time, like two and a half months before she went missing. She hired both almost at the exact same time so even though she was she wanted right. to know exactly what was happening she also wanted to do a, a divorce he's a pilot she's a stewardess he's making some a little bit of bank and she's doing okay he's also a volunteer um special constable which i'm guessing he didn't get paid for that but maybe he did i don't know back then i think maybe you did yeah okay well yeah no i think you get but paid when you go do services it, like you gotta serve papers and stuff right but, but i don't know what it is now i don't know what flight attendants get paid but they in one of the documents i read they thought she was making about 35,000 which in 1986 is a probably nice probably not bad right yeah that's not a that's not a but he's probably making 100 yeah i'm thinking around yeah. there yeah she probably could have lived on her own with that salary but i'm not sure if she would have been so, able to well, afford a nanny and all that kind of thing was, was he in the military right he's a police officer and think, and the fly so. planes usually you know, usually you come out of military, right? I don't or you think just, so. I don't, there's you know? not a whole lot of history I know about him. I'm, so he just snapped one day. It's like one of those shows. He just snapped one day. I don't think so. I think that She he, must have confronted him and said, I'm getting the divorce from you because you cheated. Then he, then he like rationalized that. And the first he probably lied and said, no, nah, no, nah, I ain't nothing. He said, well, I got so, this guy that's been following you. It's true. Okay. Then she has to, then they're going to say, okay, you want a divorce and it's going to be about money and kids. That's what it's going to come down to, right? But do you think that he premeditated that at all? So he had from November 14th is when he knew for sure she wanted a divorce. A file. She, she filed, four right? Days. She filed. He was served. I'm sorry. He was, he was served, served, yes. For four days, he had time to stew while she was gone. The day she gets back, they get into an argument within an hour, two hours of her being dropped off. Well, I think it's extremely emotional. And he kills emotional. her? So was it a crime of passion? Like he How just kill picked her? up. He just hit her? Well, they think he picked up that... that police flashlight like a mag light and hit her in the head yeah i guess we don't know the relationship before but then was it he all like kind of calm and stuff because they i'm thinking they didn't see each other a lot no right he's he's flying off somewhere she's flying off somewhere as well right and he's having an affair and <clears throat> with multiple women i think there was just one at the time a woman in new jersey did she have anything but going on on the side hella yeah no she didn't and they didn't see the kids that much right i mean kind of because they had a nanny and they were gone right Right, unless they tried to work their schedules. All right, so so he's standing there in the bedroom. They're arguing, obviously, about something. Right? He, I don't think he's just gonna. So you're saying you think you think it's premeditated? He came in. I, I got to get rid of this woman. I think that. I think he had to I do think it pretty he's quick. the type of man and he, that and he made mistakes. He is really mad that she's gonna get divorced from him. Yeah. He doesn't want to give anything up, and he needs to eliminate her and. 
in he I think the if, moment, it, if they wouldn't have gotten in an argument that night and he struck so her, I think he probably would have killed her. The freezer and the wood chipper is interesting because he has to think real quick. How am I going to take care of this? Well, I got this crap everywhere. The freaking nanny's coming tomorrow. I mean, that's a, that's a really involved way to get rid of someone, to not have thought about it before. That's It's like almost the perfect murder because... What if the nanny wanted to go in the freezer and get some chicken nuggets the next day? He's got to think about that. He's got to get that that's out That's why of he had to get him out of there. That's why he's but like, the oh, the power's gone. out. She noticed that when she got back. Who, the nanny? She noticed that the freezer was gone when, when she got back, day? and that's when she noticed... No. He took her to his parents with the kid. Several days passed. You know, wait, wait, wait. Two, who three, took? four who, days. Who, who, who? The Richard. Nanny? Yeah. They got up the next day after he killed her. Right. Okay. Put her in the freezer. She's that in the freezer. That morning, he said the power was out at the home. Did, was that it really? That the kids had to go, he, and it was too cold. Did he go cold. And sh- shut it off, or what? Yeah, probably. I mean, uh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. She was frozen, so obviously it wasn't. It was, it was. There was power yeah. to the deep freeze. No, I think that was ex- his excuse that it's too cold. You guys need heat, and you can't be here. So he hurried that, you know, got them out of there really quick. The kids, and then he was able to do the rest of his. What stuff. happened to the nanny? The nanny went with the yes, kids. She went with the kids. Oh, okay, to his parents. Yes. Then he came back. Then he came back and did all his stuff, which is... So he probably tried to clean up that So night. this is what the I guess the prosecution came up with. There was an argument. He struck her in the head. He wrapped her in the blankets. He cleaned up with the towels. And then the next day, he took the kids and the parents, you know, to the parents because there was a power outage. And then he, then he rented the wood chipper. And he also rented a U-Haul truck. And he used his credit card. I mean, that was easy to trace. And then by that time, her body was frozen. And because her body was frozen, that's why they found, you know, little to no blood splatter. Most of the remains went into the river with the little debris that was found on the shore. So there was just a handful of stuff found. I mean, there wasn't very much. I think I read that all of it together weighed five ounces. Oh, the that's bone it? Frag- yeah. So, I mean, it was wow, very. Wow, did a pretty good job. Li- that's what I'm saying. It right. was like, I mean, it was almost the perfect murder if he had not. But, but I do think they would have. They would have been able to start piecing things together because he used his credit card for the wood chipper and U-Haul. He got the nanny out of there. Then when the nanny got back, yeah, she noticed the, the stain. Right. Then he started replacing all the carpet. I mean, it's thought through to an extent, but I don't think you go to that great length of renting a wood chipper, putting her through the wood chipper and without any kind of premeditation. Like you had to have thought of that before. Yeah, but he would have gone to another town. He would have taken her somewhere else or something. And by it's, the way, the deep freezer was town. never found. And it's, they had divers you know when they found the chainsaw the the deep freeze was never ever found uh, i remember throwing a refrigerator into a river once and it floats it could have floated we used why it. We would jumped you it. Well, do that we had a lot of fun there was a low river and we could jump on it and play around on it and where'd it you even floated. get it it was one of our old ones <laughs> oh the one behind your house <laughs> we said like we were done with it let's go play in the river that's, like a boat. You're worried anyway. about a dead body, but you're putting like a fr- freeze or a refrigerator in the the river. Well, I'm thinking if you threw it in the river, it would have floated down. Yeah, so maybe he did. Maybe, I mean, he could have taken it to a dump or something, you know. And they just never found it. Yeah, but yeah, but the cops would have probably started asking, "Where's the carpet?" Right. So I don't know how long they noticed until the, there was new carpet. Right. A lot they of these wouldn't... details, because it is you know an older case, and you know a lot of these details, I just don't know if they're without looking at a repli- you know the police report from then. I don't know if you really know that or people know that you know of what all those little minor details. I'm sure there might be some answers, and I just either didn't find it in my research or it's just not commonly known. So he was arrested on January 13th, 1987 for her murder, and his first trial ended in a mistrial in 1987. So he had a second trial, which was actually moved to New London, where he was found guilty in November of 1989. He was sentenced to 50 years. He became the first man ever to be convicted in Connecticut without the discovery of a victim's body. Before being sentenced, Richard told the judge, A great deal has been said about my apparent lack of emotion. He has ice water in his veins. I have feelings like everyone else. In 1984, which, I mean, are we supposed to feel sorry for him? Why would he say something like that? That's kind of like oddball behavior. I don't know. I mean, people think about themselves. Sometimes they start reflecting and what do people think? But he's me? he's not concerned that his wife is missing and dead. He's concerned about how people are perceiving him. Like, get over yourself, dude. I, I think a lot of, don't you hear this a lot? Like, they're worried about themselves and not the other person. I mean, usually you'd be telling the cops, go look for the person that killed my wife. She. Right. Da, 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 if da. I'm acute, if somebody ne- like you know close to me comes up missing and I didn't do it, that is what that I that is going to be my main concern. Who did this? Where is this person? It's not going to be. Oh gosh, people think I'm I'm cold and and heartless. Oh god, no. It's going to be like where 
is my loved yeah, one. Yeah, because they're he building this, this narrative, right? They're all building this. Na- oh, he's got all the symptoms. He's he's cold and, and ruthless, and he travels a lot. He had an affair, and da, da 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 So they're making this story so they can believe he's the one, right? People want to figure this. You want to figure this stuff out, so you're trying to put all this stuff together, you know, to make your the narrative fit, and that's what he's thinking as well. But I also know that right there's an when image. you're I mean, you watching someone hide. in court. If someone's obsessively crying, what do people say? Oh, they're faking it. They're faking it. They're they're crying and sobbing. Then when you're cold, it's look at them. They're cold. They don't care. They're not cracking a smile. You know, the people have to prep their, you know, the people that they're defending in these criminal cases. They need an image because, consultant. Yeah, because if you're overly emotional, mm. it's people will, will view it this way. You know, say they're faking it. If you're not emotional at all, it's you're cold. You're, they're not making eye contact. They're looking down. They're, you know, it's, it, you can, you can take someone's behavior and twist it into what you want it to be to fit what you believe happened. So if you believe they're innocent, you're going to say, well, they're putting their head down because they're sad or they're crying because they really are upset. You know, you can twist it into whatever you want. So it's, I don't think it matters how you act in court. Because they're going to twist it into whatever they want to believe happened, you know? Yeah. So shortly after Richard was convicted and sent to prison, he was diagnosed with colon cancer and given a 2% chance of survival. However, in 2018, he's alive and I'm guessing well. He's 80 years old and he is serving time in Mac. So he's serving time in MacDougall Walker Correctional Institution, inmate number 152. 724 with a release date of May 11th of 2021. That's not far from now. That's not 50 years. No, he will have served 31 years. Mm. Anytime you look into Hella's disappearance and murder, there are also two other women that are usually mentioned. At the same time that Hella was missing, there was also another um, missing woman from Newtown named Regina Brown. Her disappearance was overshadowed by Hella missing. Regina was last seen on March 26th, 1987. She was also a flight attendant, and her husband was also a pilot, and they both worked for American Airlines, which I think that right there is just kind of weird. Hmm. Friends of Regina said that she followed the Crafts case very closely, even keeping newspaper clippings about the case. She also told friends that if she disappeared, that it was her husband, Willis. In September of 1986, there was a restraining order against Willis, her husband. There was also a history of domestic violence against Regina. On March 21st, Regina put her two older children on a plane to Texas to stay with her parents. Regina called a friend on March 22nd to tell her that Willis had threatened to kill her and her three children. Her children were four, three, and two years old. On March 25th, Regina called her friend again to say she was sending her last child and the babysitter to her parents in Texas. Regina told her friend that if she's not in Texas by March 30th to call the police. Regina didn't arrive in Texas, and her friend did not call the police. (laughs) Regina's neighbor called the Newtown police on April 2nd to report that Gina had not been seen since March 26th of 1987. And there was also a call. This is Newtown also? This is Newtown, yes. It's a crazy town. There had been a call that they had made, a neighbor had made before April 2nd because the dog, it was actually the day after. So it was March 26th. A neighbor had called and said that their dog was tied up in this kind of breezeway at the house and just barking and barking and barking. And the police never went and checked it. So it wasn't until April 2nd that she was reported missing. Nobody had seen her since March 26th. Regina had, Regina's never been found. Her body has never been found. Her home was located on Whippoorwill Hill Road in Newtown. And her husband, Willis, was a pilot and owned a moped rental business on Block Island in Rhode Island called The Moped Man, which I was curious to see because, you know, one of my favorite shows, The Affair, they go to Block Island several times Mm. throughout the series. So I was curious to see if The Moped Man was still an actual business on Block Island because it's not a very big island and having a moped would be kind of cool to go around that. Yeah, it it is. And he still owns it. (laughs) And there's pictures of him. I looked up some reviews on Yelp and they were really bad. <laughs> they were saying his mopeds were rusty and they were breaking down. And I, I don't know if he's still a pilot, but um, he definitely still owns the moped man on Block Island. I wonder why you'd go from that being a pilot to renting mopeds. Well, he did both. Uh, yeah. He did both. But yeah. she has she has never been found. And I looked up the So are home. you saying that you think he's guilty because he's got bad reviews on Yelp? <laughs> You think that's why I'm saying he's guilty? Are you for real? 
Yeah, I mean, that's, you're trying to make that connection. No, there was a history of, of domestic violence. She was okay, going to leave yeah. him. She and had a restraining she had, order on him. Yeah, but she had something too, right? She had... Uh, what did she have? Uh, I thought she, he had a restraining order. She had no, a, a no. count of domestic no. violence. No, she had a restraining order against him. Yes, and you mentioned something else. Yeah, and there was a history of domestic violence with him against her. Oh, I thought there was a no. domestic assault or something. She no. had a domestic assault. Are you paying attention? Here we go. With we this. have to go th- through this every time. She's never been found. And if you look at where okay. their home is on Whippoorwill um, Hill Road, it's okay. it kind of at the end of a cul-de-sac. The so you think area the, is these is, pilots talked talked about this, and there's a two for one deal that night with Mr. Woodchipper over. I'll do yours and mine together. I don't think the cases are really related, but I think that it's really coincidental that you know regina was a flight attendant hella was a flight attendant richard was a pilot willis was a pilot that's just weird within months of each other town. and it's a new town and they live in very similar areas the houses are like less than a, a, a mile or two apart i don't even know, know if they, they knew each other? each other i'm just saying that's a weird coincidence i don't see that there's any connection whatsoever i just find it very odd i wonder if what's his name gets out of prison he's going to go and rent a scooter in block island <laughs> a rusty old scooter <laughs> okay so two years before hella went missing another woman was missing from oh, newtown my goodness. this is two years before hella okay elizabeth heath went and anytime you do research on hella crafts these two women come up Regina Brown and Elizabeth Heath. So Elizabeth Heath went missing in April of 1984. So like two years before Hella. Elizabeth's body was found in 2010. Wrapped in a nightgown and sheets from the bed she shared with her husband. Her bones were in a dark and damp cistern built into the foundation of a barn on the family property located at Poverty Hollow Road in Newtown. How'd they find that? What were they doing? So in 2010, actually Elizabeth's husband lost the home. It was foreclosed on. Another family bought the property. I guess there was, was um, several. No, <laughs> <laughs> but I guess there was like several outbuildings that were very old and had at one point been, you know, like a, a family homestead. So in 2010, the new property owner found her remains when renovating a kitchen in a barn on the property, one of the outbuildings. Mm. John Heath, Elizabeth's husband, maintained his innocence, but was found guilty and sentenced to 50 years. Connecticut loves the 50-year sentence. He only served two years in prison and died in prison. Mm. So How old was he? He was just old, died old age or whatever. Yeah, and he was... Oh, um, so 2010, they found the body. 2010, they... When, they found wait, her body, yeah. Then they convicted him? Or when when did he go to prison? Shortly after 2010. Oh. They did the trial. Oh, they opened the case. If you look him up, he is in, in the trial. He has, like, oxygen and just looks very sickly. So he had health issues. And apparently that's how he lost the home, the property, well, how because do you know he, he got sick. He wasn't faking it, Amory. He was just faking it. He had some. He went and bought some oxygen. He was just faking it. Well, apparently but actually he, he, just, he did die, though. Uh, no, but apparently he had gotten sick and was unable to work, and that contributed to him losing the property. I'm not saying he wasn't sick. Did he kill his wife and put her in a cistern? Yes, he did in 1984. So well, he had a lot of years to live thought. and was a guilty that. man. You weren't there, but. Well, who else would have had a motive to kill her? Yeah, who that's knows? what I thought. Who knows? So what's going on with the parasite? In Newtown. Do you know what Parasite is? No. It's acts of killing one's father or less usually one's mother or some close relative, but usually not children. Isn't that most These murders? M- husbands killed their wives. Okay. But most murders, they know the other person when they're murdering them, right? They're all parasites. Not really. What do you think is going on in Newtown with, with husbands killing their wives? Well, That's three right there. Well, <sighs> I'm sure know. there's more, but these are the three I was covering mm-hmm. from the 80s. I don't know. It's That's just a bad town. That's got a bad omen over it. But the crime rate's actually very low in terms of random yeah, and violent crimes. Yeah, but it's just crazy crime. crimes yeah. that happen there. There's further reading, which is, like I mentioned, The Woodchipper Murder, Arthur Herzog. Book, I didn't have my original copy, so I got one on Amazon. And this is like the crustiest, grossest copy of a book. I mean, look. But, it's got like a plastic cover and like anybody dirt. Who listens to this, I, it's from a library. iPod can buy it for six ninety nine from me. <laughs> <laughs> it's from a library in Georgia. It's just really crusty and gross. And then the published date is nineteen eighty nine. 
Really good book. Quick read. There are some pictures in it. Black and white. Also, there's a chapter in Dr. Henry Lee's book, Cracking Cases, The Science of Solving Crimes. There is a chapter he devoted to the Woodchipper murder, which is um, really good to read as well. And then I'd like to end with, I did find just a very short dialogue of Richard Crafts being interviewed on December 11th by investigators. So they went to question Richard Crafts on December 11th. Investigators located Crafts on duty at the Southbury Police Department where he was working the night shift because, you know, he did actually work part-time as a, a special constable. Newtown detectives called Southbury and asked that they send over Officer Crafts for further questioning. He arrived at the detective division in full uniform at 9.20 p.m. Lieutenant Michael DeJoseph had already prepared some questions and conducted the interview. According to police reports, this was how the interview progressed. Did you know that your wife hired a private investigator? Richard, no. Did you know that the PI has documented your relationship with a New Jersey woman? Richard, no. Why would your wife tell her friend she was afraid of herself regarding serving you divorce papers and tell them to check on her if something happened? Richard, I cannot imagine her saying this. It is completely out of her character to say this. <laughs> Question. On November 18th, when Hella came home, when and why did she leave? Richard, those answers are in my statement. Question. What is the story with your bedroom rug? Apparently you removed it or cut some pieces out of it. Can you explain this to me? Richard, all the rugs in the house are being removed and replaced. Question. What was spilled on the rug in your bedroom? Answer. Kerosene. Does kerosene leave a black, dark stain if you spill it on no, carpet? I think it's clear. Yeah, that's I think what I'm kerosene thinking. is clear, but if I don't know, unless you're cleaning something, if, so some people use kerosene to clean up greasy stuff. They'd be like blood. Uh, well, whatever, but it would be black, you know, because it, it dissolves that that oil and grime uh, yeah. into it. So you could, I could see it happening, that, right? So the chainsaw, you clean chainsaw blades. I think people used to take them and throw them in kerosene mm. or something, and they would clean them up. Question. Did you cut pieces out of the rug? Answer. Yes. Two feet at a time. It's easier to remove that way. Question. What did you do with the rug you took out of the bedroom? Dumped bedroom rug in the Newtown landfill one week ago. It was blue in color. Question. Why have you been telling everyone different things about Hella being missing, like her mother being sick? Answer. I didn't want to say my wife was gone and I did not know where she was. Question. Has Hella received any mail since she's been missing? Answer. No. She's gotten no letters since she left. She usually gets about two letters a week. And then that's pretty much it. I don't know. He's going to be released in 2021. I just, rem I wonder if his kids are estranged from him or if they've. Yeah. Whatever happened to his kids? Uh, um, I did yeah, find. Yeah, three kids, right? Yeah. I mean, I did. I think they, I think they may have They're in their, changed their name. They're probably 40s. Yeah. Right. right well, one of them, the oldest one would have been born in, I think, uh, 76. Mm, mm. I think is what yeah, I like 40, out. right? 42. Yeah, 76, 78, and 81, possibly. So what? Um, I, I did find them through Facebook. social media, but um, I mean, it's it's hard to really say, you know. What did it say? What, I, I, did you find them? Did you not find them? <laughs> What's going on here? I did, but I mean, it's not like they're talking about it and chatting about it, you know? And, and I don't think that's... I, I'm not going to contact them or anything, you know? I mean, they probably want to move on with their life. Yeah. I would assume that's kind of a black cloud. Do you that think they don't that they think that their dad's with. guilty? I mean, how can you not? Nobody else had a motive. She seemed a really sweet person. Do you think they ever went and visited him in prison? I have no idea. That's what I'm saying. I, I don't know if they're estranged from her or not, or from him mm -hmm. or not. I, it's kind of hard to deny that he didn't do this. Yeah. He looks pretty guilty. Very interesting way to get rid of someone, in my opinion. Have there been other wood chipper murders? Copycats? There actually was not that long ago, and it was um it was a worker, I guess, that they suspect went through a wood chipper. On accident or on purpose? They put him through it. Oh. I can't remember his name right now. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying, yeah. You can't do it if the person's not frozen though. I mean, that's kind of where he you could do That's it. almost like a premeditated thing to know to put her, to freeze her, and then put her know. through. Premeditated. Because he obviously used the chainsaw to cut up the pieces and then put the pieces one by one, you know what I mean, into. I think and it's easier. It's probably smart on this part to do that, you know? That's what I'm saying. It's like, that's But I don't know if it's premeditated. Seems... It's like, I'm going to do this, you know? She's going to gum it up and crap. I gotta... Why would you even think of a wood chipper? 
I, I wouldn't even know the first place to rent a what wood chipper. You, what else would you do with it? Throw it in the cistern and get caught like later? Maybe. I don't know. That wasn't a bad idea. You should have hooked up with that guy. Okay, now you're scaring me. <laughs> the the book has the witch of murder has some pictures that he took with Nancy Dodd. Um Richard with Nancy Dodd, that was the woman from New Jersey that he was having an affair with. There's pictures of them. There's pictures of Keith Mayo, who is the private investigator, picture of the wood chipper, Henry Lee, and of course, you know, Richard Crafts. So I hope you all enjoyed this episode. It's a lesser known case, I think. And it was my first exposure of Newtown, Connecticut. But I think most people know of Newtown from the shooting and some other little weird things going on in Newtown. Anything else you want to add? That's a crazy town. <laughs> all right. Until next time, be good. And if you can't be good, be careful. Be careful.